We're working on a project right now that requires a couple forms that are not attached to any database information. So we don't have any streams or models or anything like that to work with. What we want to do is take the user's input and submit it to an API and then take that response and format it for um, a data table that we're going to append via Ajax below the form. So we want a form that's going to submit via Ajax and we're also going to consume a response from Pyro to um, display some information on the screen. And there's going to be a little bit of validation involved and I want to leverage the form builder um, to try and automate as much of this as I can and organize the business logic. I don't want to write a whole bunch of HTML and validation. I just want to get to the nuts and bolts of what I need to do which is the API work. So I've got a, a page here and it's built using the grid field type and I've got a couple simple blocks here like I show in the documentation for the grid field type but um, I'm going to use an HTML one here to write this up and then I'm going to stuff it into a partial and just include it here. That way the client can't tamper with it. So what I want to do is basically build a form builder from the ground up and render it using a custom layout submit it with Ajax and then use that response to append a table of information below the form. So to get started I'm using the form function like you normally would with any kind of stream and instead of a namespace in stream slug I'm sending it an array of uh, definition information and this is going to build up a generic form builder and um, kind of automate a lot of this process for me. So the first thing I'm doing is setting it to Ajax. So the form submits via Ajax and I need to require this JavaScript file for that to work by default. I'll later replace this with a, a custom one that's going to do um, the appension of the response below the form and everything. But for now, this is just for demonstration. I'll just keep it like this. And again, because there's no streams information, we don't have any kind of model to save. There, if, if I didn't define a handler, this form would basically validate and then do nothing. So this is where I'm going to put my business logic, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, next, I'm going to define some options, and I want to disable redirecting. So I want um, the response after it succeeds. I want it to just return the response uh, via Ajax back to me. And I don't want it to automatically redirect anywhere like I normally would. And then I'm going to define the fields manually and I've got links in the description of this video for the field definitions. Um, this is the slug, the type, a simple validation, and I have to label them manually. Um, note I'm using the short syntax here. Uh, if I were to redistribute something like in an add-on or a migration, I would use the anomaly.fieldType.text syntax, but because this is a project, the shorthand is fine. Um, and lastly, I'm defining the actions, and this is going to be the submit buttons. And I've got two of them here because depending on what they click, I want to be able to isolate that and change the information that I return from the JSON response um, depending on what, what action they clicked. So I'm using get, and I am going to set all of this to a form variable, and I'm simply going to... Uh, do the open tag here in this Ajax is so that default Ajax.js script will listen to this form. Um, you can replace that with anything you want in your own custom JavaScript. Um, and then I'm using a, a simple bootstrap layout to display the fields. And this is just saying um, I want the fields collection off of this form. And the origin zip is the slug of the field I want. And by default, it'll just return the rendering of the whole the whole field wrapper. So it'll include the label instructions warning, any required flag, and the entire input, and any JavaScript dependencies. And um, you can go into this and start isolating like the label separately. And if you wanted to put maybe the input underneath of it, and uh, you know, really get into like a granular control of everything, but for now, this is fine. I don't need anything more than just general input rendering. Um, and then I've got a custom, kind of like a repeater, that it's just a very simple repeater, and I'm just making this custom HTML, and that's why I include this calculator.js, and I'll show you that here in a second, but 
uh, finally I render the actions together and then I uh, close the form and this is a stash in a storage file so I'm going to open that up first so um, I think this is good to go let's take a look at the form this is the form that it generates and as you can see it's got the simple layout and the inputs with the labels and the little uh, required flag is all set up I've got CSS styling that and if we just submit this form the generic response causes an alert that gives us the the errors so these fields are required let's go ahead and do that and let's open up our network monitor and check out what's going on behind the scenes here alright so we posted and here you see we've got our JSON response already and really we haven't put in much effort at all you know there's a little bit of extra work with rendering this form manually with the out with the, the bootstrap layout but other than that it's been pretty painless we've got some simple validation um, we're ready to go this is that input I was telling you about with the calculator.js it just allows you to add more weights in their their shipping classes so um, we're good to go here let's open up the handler and see what's going on there so handlers always accept a builder instance and this is resolved out of the uh, Laravel service container so aside from the builder you can inject anything here in the constructor and you can inject it here in the method as well so what I'm doing next is this is where I would put all of my API information so I would take the builder and I would use the form uh, values uh, maybe get form value and then like the origin zip and I can use these values to uh, post against the the API and you know do I'll take I'll take the values post it to the API get the response and you'll probably want to use um, commands here to chunk out the logic and like consuming the response from the API and formatting it the way that you want to pass it into JSON and then here is a simple callback that's fired just before the JSON response is set and it allows you to set custom data on the response so that you can put you know your your table information here to loop through with your with your JavaScript so that's all I'm doing here and if you uh, if we post this you can see that that's that is being added uh, stinking debug bar and that is being added right here so that's where you would put all the information that you want to in my case append after the form here so that's the basics of it and in the coming videos I'll show you how I flesh this out with the API and uh, write up that custom JavaScript file